Okay, so I thought I'd do a review of, uh, this is the Hakko um, FX888D, uh, which is basically a Japanese make soldering iron that, as you can see, plugs into the wall. Um, and there's temperature controller here. And this is a gas powered uh, Dremel Versatip gas powered soldering iron. Uh, as well as it also has a bunch of other stuff that it works with for sort of heat stripping and all that sort of stuff. But primarily I'm talking about it as a portable soldering iron. So, pros and cons are quite simply, this has a really good temperature controller. This, it's a little bit vague and you kind of have to guess it. Uh, this obviously comes with all the nice stands and cleaning pads and you can change the temperature quite accurately. And of course the, the tips, should we say, are a little bit more sophisticated than the ones here. I think it's fair to say a lot of the times uh, if you're doing really, really serious work, of course you're going to need these. For example, this is uh, ESD safe, which basically means it's not going to transmit any electrical shocks into the, 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 the components that you're soldering. Um, this is obviously just as is. Um, but I thought I'd just show that this is honestly something that's pretty portable. Uh, these unscrew these nozzles pretty easily. And as you can see through here, there's a little hole, which is basically where the gas blowtorch vents. So the gas comes up, vents out of there, uh, the flame, and this basically just gets really, really hot. And as you can see, um, th these are my own tools. They've been used for, for years. Um, and I'm kind of all about that, not just doing a, a cheeky little unbox and hoping it all works out, but actually it breaks after no time. So this has honestly been through all sorts of madness. I've, I've used it to sort of melt uh, plastic, uh, welding things. Um, I've, I've, you know, inscribed things on wood uh, and obviously done a lot of soldering with it as well on workshops. The benefit is you obviously don't have to be near an outlet. You can be in rain uh, if you have to, <laughs> so you're not going to get an electric shock. And I think there's a lot to be said for the fact that this is also really good for just doing heat shrink. And that little hot vent, you can put it near heat shrink uh, and get the job done real quick. So now that you've seen that this is basically just a ceramic uh, component inside, you can see if I unscrew this, then that's, that's essentially what we've got going on. It's basically a, a ceramic tipped blow torch and as you can see these things come back together pretty nicely without any real fuss so to fire it up uh, you basically have a, a bit like a cigarette lighter you have a, a low to a high switch put it on low so it goes quickly so you can hear it and if I put it so I don't set fire to my camera uh, you can see it's starting to get hot that tip it's starting to go orange you can possibly see it just in there but that's basically where it's where it's going and so uh, once you fire it up you can lock it on and as you see it's quite a nice feature that you you know you can't accidentally leave it switched on unless you've knowingly uh, put it on I'd say the only play thing that is a bit of a concern is sometimes you put it down with that vent and that will put out quite a bit of heat if I just demo that here you can see it's just you know it'll definitely set fire to stuff uh, but it heats up really quite quickly as I say if I've got a bit of bit of solder it's not quite there yet but there we go and so you could sort of quite happily get to work tinning up the wire just there I'm not saying this is a thing of beauty but you can see the principle if you have more time. And that's it, switched off. And it has a nice little stand that keeps it off the table. So that leads me rather nicely to one little trick that I've uh, picked up from engineers uh, at various places. This is probably like the best soldering tip I've ever come across, uh, which is using a little bit of blue tack. And it means that if you've got something where you really need that extra uh, bit of support, you can sort of bend this so that it's got a natural bit of tension and that allows you to not just sort of place the solder on like a butter knife, but you can actually sort of set it up really nicely with a bit of spring tension. And so that'll solder on much more nicely. But obviously I'm just doing this for a quick rough video. 
um, but I think that's one of the best tips. Also, investing in a pair of uh, good wire strippers really can save you a huge amount of money in the long term just because they, you know, remove any sort of, you know, should we say, stripping out unneedless wires uh, from the core. And also it's a lot safer than using your teeth as I have done in the past. <coughs> so again, a bit of safety is, uh, I think if you are gonna use one of these, I kind of swear by buying these, um, let's just unplug it, these sockets. And it means that you can basically switch it on and for half an hour, this will stay on and then it'll time out after half an hour and switch off completely. So I think it's just a really good precaution when you're using uh, soldering irons um, and it just gives you a lot less to worry about. So there we go, I'll just switch it on now. And then as you can see, switch it on that. And maybe one thing I'll do just before it gets super hot <laughs> is show you how to change the tips. It's always good to do it this way around. And so what we've got is the cover there. You take these off and really try not to touch this bit because grease isn't gonna help it. And then we'd just be able to change it over to one of these other tips. And as you can see, you've got all sorts of really great professional level ranges of tips for soldering irons here. And then carefully put this back over, screw it on, obviously set the angle that you prefer and then fire it up on the side as you can see goes up to temperature now you can change this temperature around to whatever you want and as you can see it, it heats up really fast and that's one of the reasons I actually really wanted to get this uh, particular model is it just gets the temperature really quick and if you put something reasonably meaty on it uh, it seems to just hold temperature really well so it, it, it compensates really effectively so there we go. And so let's say I was going back to doing this. Hardly the right tip for doing it and arguably a bit beefy solder for the job in question. But having that um, blue tack is super helpful as a support. And I think what's great about using blue tack is that it allows me to like properly heat up the component as opposed to sort of trying to like spread butter on. So anyway, forgive me for a less than perfect uh, solder job, but that's really just to talk about the two different advantages of this and uh, give you a quick walkthrough.